Hallelujah. 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 Is there anybody that's got a made up mind? A made up mind. No matter what happens to me, one thing I know is I'm going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to live for Him. Though often I fail, oh, I'll keep pressing in because it's my desire to live for him oh if you could see where Jesus brought me from to the where I am today then you would know the reason why I love him so to
reason why I love him so. Now you can take this world's wealth and riches. I don't need earth's fame. It's my desire. is to live for Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you slip up your hand and just praise Him right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. He is so real. And there's nothing like His presence. I don't know what my life would be like if I didn't have Jesus. I don't even want to think about what it would be like. Because He is everything to me. Everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel his presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so good to see everybody here in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you have been sick. Sister JJ and Sister Nancy, we're so glad you're here. I know that uh, there have been, there's been some sickness that we've been praying for you, but we have missed you. It's good to have Sergio back with us. It's good to have Sharice back with us. Good to have everyone here in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask you a very serious question, and I want you to give me an honest answer by just slipping your hand up if your answer is yes. Are you ready to allow God to speak to you? Would you raise your hand if you're ready for that? For God to speak to you, not to someone else, but to you. Amen. Because that's what God is here to do. He is here to speak to each one of us through His Word. God has been dealing with me about this message for some weeks. You know, some of the newer preachers, like Sister Latricia, ask questions about, you know, when do you study for your messages? And, and uh, you know, do you just study that week for what you're going to preach on Sunday? And, and, you know, God speaks to each one of us in a different way. And it, there's, there's not a bad way to hear from God. But there are many times that messages are just tumbling around in my spirit just moving around inside of me, sometimes for years, believe it or not. There are things that God speaks to me, and that's one of the reasons that I like to read the Bible through. Uh, when I get done, I want to read it through again, because when I'm going through the Word, things begin to come alive. And God, you know, it's sometimes God will speak to me instantaneously about His Word, but sometimes God will allow that thing to just stew and, and, and just be there for a long time. And it becomes part of me. And the word that God has given to me today, uh, the Lord has been speaking to me about this for a number of weeks. And so I believe that this is the day that God has chosen. I want to welcome everybody that is watching us online. Seems like every week I'm hearing about new people that are asking for our links to the YouTube page. And I want to tell you that God is moving, and if you will receive the word that is going forth, he will move in your life. You can have what you want in God. You can have healing. You can have peace. You can have a miracle through the word of God. And today my prayer, just like for the congregation that I'm preaching before today, my prayer is that you will receive the word of God, which is a creative force, and allow yourself to be changed because God's intention with his word is that you be changed forever. Amen.
When God speaks to us, it's not for a temporary boost. It's not for a temporary uplifting. It's for a permanent change. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to preach today with the help of the Lord, a message entitled, wait for it, The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games. All right. Turn with me in Matthew, the fifth chapter. (laughs) Matthew, the fifth chapter. You know, the the real holy people don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) So if you don't know what I'm talking about, praise God. (laughs) But I think most of you do. (laughs) Matthew, the fifth chapter in the sixth verse, it says this, a very uh, familiar and often used passage of scripture. Jesus was teaching on the mount. This is often referred to the whole fifth chapter as the sermon on the mount. And it is a wonderful passage of scripture. It is definitely worth going to over and over again, because if you want the blessings of God in your life, Jesus said, these are the things that will bring blessings. Is there anybody that wants the blessings of God? Amen. All right. Well, I'll take yours. That's okay. (laughs) Here's what Jesus said. Blessed are they which do hunger. Everybody say hunger. And thirst after righteousness. For they, who? It's the ones who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Those are the ones they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord. And God, I just, I know your spirit is already here, but Lord, I pray right now for a special touch upon your people, upon your servant to preach and your people to hear the word of God today. Lord, give us ears that will hear by, Lord, the the things of the Spirit of God that you want to impart to us today. Holy Ghost, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would walk up and down these aisles and in between these pews, Lord, and that you would impart your word unto us today. I bind every spirit of doubt. I bind every spirit of distraction, and I bind every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that has come to disrupt and to keep us from receiving today, I bind and rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I command right now, Lord God, that that this would be a word, Lord, that would go, uh, God, into our spirits, Lord. God, today, in the name of Jesus, we stand upon your word and we take dominion over every uh, obstacle in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I don't know whether I'm praying over somebody in this congregation or over somebody that is sitting at the computer listening to me today, but right now I bind the spirit that is trying to distract and keep the word from them in the name of Jesus. I come into authority by the word of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And we come right now into your presence. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Now, hunger is one of the possibly the strongest, most powerful forces in life. I'm talking about natural and I'm talking about spiritual hunger. Hunger will make you do things that you never thought that you would do. Amen? Oh, come on. You all are looking like, no, I've got it under control. No, see, (laughs) hunger will make you get up at 3.30 in the morning when everybody else is asleep and go raid the refrigerator and find stuff to eat and eat stuff that you would be ashamed to pile your plate with when everybody's looking. Come on. Hunger will cause those who are, who are starving to death to literally steal and kill so that they can feed themselves. Hunger is one of the most incredible forces because every single time you think you've got it under control, it seems like it's got you under control instead. Hunger will cause you to do things that you would not normally do. But I have a question to ask you today. Is 
is hunger something that you can control? Is hunger something that you can control? We're going to leave that question hang in there for just a minute because here's, uh, I want to point to the fact that we all know about physical hunger. We all know that we've got to feed our bodies. I began to research hunger and I began to look at the hormones that are released and the different things that the body, it is a very, very complex process that your body goes through in order to make you hungry so that you will eat to feed your body and to give yourself strength hunger is part of the process of feeding yourself so that you can go and be strong and healthy and do the things that you need to do in fact hunger is a god-given force in your physical body but i don't want to stop there i want you to understand that whether you know it or not whether you realize it or not today there is a spiritual hunger inside of every single human being i want to tell you today that god created you with a spiritual hunger for the things of god some of you know what I'm talking about when I say that there are times that we have sought after things that we thought would satisfy. Somebody can relate when I say that we searched for things that would fill a hunger that we couldn't really uh, understand uh, that was so deep inside of us. Uh, a hunger that we thought to, that, that, that would, would drive us to things that we thought would be the satisfaction we were desiring and craving. But I've got to tell somebody at this house today, God created you with a hole in your soul that is in the shape of the Spirit of God. And it doesn't matter what you try to cram into that place deep inside of your soul. There's nothing that will ever satisfy you but Jesus Christ. There is nothing that will ever satisfy you except the Spirit of Almighty God. That's why we've got to tell this lost and dying uh, nation, this lost and dying generation. Uh, listen, uh, we may not have the answer in ourselves. Uh, oh, but let me tell you about somebody that can fill every longing that you ever had. Uh, let me tell you about somebody whose name is Jesus uh, that can heal your body, that can heal your spirit, that can put the broken pieces uh, back together again. Uh, I know somebody and he's my friend uh, and his name is Jesus uh, and if he did it for me, uh, he can do it for you. Let me tell you, I used to be lost. I once was blind. I once did not have hope, but to Today, I stand before you healed by the power of God, forgiven by the blood of Jesus and made whole by the spirit of God. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Hallelujah. You see, we become so intimidated when it comes to telling people about Jesus. Don't you know you've got the message? Don't you understand you've got the gospel? Don't you know that God has placed the word of reconciliation upon you? Oh, we ought to be bold talking about Jesus because we have the very thing that humanity is longing for and desiring for. You've got it and we've got to give it. Jesus said, free you have received freely give hallelujah and so hunger is something that is so strong in us and we don't even realize that there is a spiritual hunger that will drive you in directions that maybe are not where you want to be but it, you are uh, being controlled to a certain extent by a hunger a driving force within you my question is do you have any control over the hunger the hunger. I entitled my message The Hunger Games because you see, the enemy knows about hunger. The enemy knows about desire. The enemy knows and he will use that hunger to manipulate you. Has anybody found out besides me that the enemy likes to manipulate? Sure he does. The enemy likes to deceive. And the more I find out about how he's a manipulator and he's a deceiver, you know what? When I find out that people in my life are manipulators and deceivers, you know what it makes me want to do? It makes me want to love them from afar. 
I said it makes me want to get myself out of their sphere of influence because I don't appreciate being manipulated. I don't appreciate being lied to. I don't appreciate being deceived. And the devil is not only a liar, but he is the father of lies. And I want to tell somebody today that the devil does not even know how to tell the truth. All he knows how to do is pervert the truth. And so I'm talking about hunger games. Do we have any control over hunger? The answer is yes, we have control over hunger. How do we control hunger? You see, the things that we hunger for can be controlled. Now let me just, let me just analyze this a little bit with you today. Because you see, there are people that come into the presence of God. There are people that come into this church, and I'm sure many other churches. You know, uh, I, I can't speak for other churches, but I've got a cousin that's a pastor, and I've got, you know, all kinds of friends across the country that are pastors, and it's pretty much what they're telling me is lining up with what's going on here and, and across the country in these last days. People have lost their hunger for the things of God. You see, people. People will come in the door when they're desperate. People will come in the door when they've got a need. People will come in the door of the church when everything is falling apart. Oh, but then they come in and they get a big old dose of the Holy Ghost and he satisfies and he begins to heal and they begin to be put back together and they begin to receive the very thing that they have longed for. And all of a sudden, it seems like out of nowhere, the church gets whiplash because as soon as they came in the door, it's like a road runner. Boom. Just leaving a trail of dust out the door. And where are they? Seemed like they really loved God. Seemed like they were, you know, and of course I could tell you story after story of people that came with tears in their eyes saying, Pastor, you don't even know what this means to me. I've been looking for this church all my life. I am so happy and, and so thrilled and I'm going to serve God and, and I want to do something and God, you know, on and on and on and on and on. And, and uh, of course I've Learn to smile and say, well, praise God, <laughs> because what I'm really thinking in my mind is we'll see. We'll see. Matter of fact, people come in that used to serve God. How many know the backsliding is real? Backsliding is real. You talk to David who wrote the Psalms and you begin to see what he says about it. He talks about backsliders that used to have a relationship with God, but they're backslid folks. Listen, we don't talk about backsliding anymore in the church. But as far as I know, nobody went to all of our Bibles and took it out. You know, today we hear a lot about redacting on the news. You know, papers come out and, and then they get redacted. Anybody know what that means? It means that these papers, you know, you're, you're giving somebody uh, emails or documents and, and you redact. It means you take a, a black marker and you just mark the things out that you don't want to show to, to, to people. And so you just hand them something. I've seen redacted documents that were, you know, just white border with all black, everything redacted, and they hand it over. Listen, uh, the devil would like to redact the word of God. The devil would like to pervert the word of God. But David talked about the backslider way back in the Psalms, way back in the days uh, when he was king and when he uh, was on the earth. And so today I want to tell you that it's not been taken out of the Bible. Backsliding is real. What does backsliding mean? Well, I grew up old school Pentecost and backsliding used to mean, <laughs> you know, I found out that the reason I need to read the Bible for myself is because when people tell me something means something, it's not always the way the Bible says it. Huh. Amen. Amen. If I had just listened to folks tell me what the Bible means and what the Bible says, I want to tell you, I wouldn't be standing here today. 
But thank God I got a revelation from the Holy Ghost. Thank God I went to the book for myself. And as a matter of fact, Paul said this. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. And as your pastor today, and as the man of God preaching this word to you today, I want to tell you, don't trust me alone. Don't just look to me to be your source. You check out what I'm preaching to you. You go to the word of God. That's why we give you the references. That's why you've got Bibles right in front of you underneath the pew. That's why we put the scriptures up on uh, the PowerPoint because we better be rooted and grounded uh, in the word of God uh, because I want to tell you in these last days uh, there are seducing spirits uh, that want to take you away uh, and wash you out to something that doesn't mean a thing. Can I tell you God spoke to me just yesterday and and, and I begin to I begin to try to just really pray about the different churches that are out there that are not preaching the gospel. And I'm not talking about the ones that I mention all the time. I'm talking about big mega churches that are preaching everything except the gospel. They're not preaching bad things. But they're preaching stuff like you've got the favor of God and you're not a bad person and you're okay and and everything's going to be all right. Can I tell you that somebody better be preaching the blood of Jesus because a pep talk is not going to get anybody into heaven and there's nobody that's going to be saved by accident. I begin to pray and say, God, how should I feel about, I don't even know how to feel about these churches. I don't want to condemn people that are trying to do something for God. And of course, God, you know, in his infinite wisdom, he said, you just keep your nose where it needs to be. And you just do what you're supposed to do. You just preach what you're supposed to preach. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't have time to try to to make people feel good about themselves i've got to tell somebody your house is on fire and there's somebody that can save you and so i want to talk just for a minute about backsliding because here's what backsliding means in the scripture it means moving back from where you used to be seems pretty obvious doesn't it of course, the Pentecostal churches redid all that, made it real complex, and it means that you've been sat down off the platform, and it means that you cut your hair, or it means, I don't know, it means a whole bunch of different crazy things. But in the scripture, it means this. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. In the scripture, it means I used to have a relationship here with God, and for whatever reason, Now, I have a relationship from back here with God. It doesn't mean you're lost. It doesn't mean that you're going to burn forever in a devil's hell. That's not funny, but it's just funny the way that we grew up. You know, the pastors that I grew up under is do what I do, what I say, not sometimes what I do, but do what I say for sure if you don't want to go to hell. Has anybody ever heard pastors teaching on tithing around here? Anybody been in that? I know a few of you have. Have I ever mentioned hell one time in context of tithing? Not one time. Well, I'll tell you something. I was raised where if you didn't pay your tithes, you weren't going to be saved. You were going to be lost. But see, I'm not about trying to attach things in the word of God that are not attached by God. I believe in tithing just as much as I'm breathing. I believe tithing is the will of God and it will change your life. But listen, if you don't want to tithe, I'm not going to send you to hell for it. You're just going to have a catastrophe in your finances. It's just the way, just the way it is. Your finances are going to be a train wreck. But if you will tithe and if you will get yourself into alignment with the word of God, then you're going to have blessing released in your life. You're going to have miracles on a daily basis in your life. It's up to you. So you see, not everything is about dangling folks feet over the flames till they're nice, crispy, golden brown. And that's not what I'm here to do today. But I am here to preach to somebody that you used to be somewhere with God and you take inventory of your life today. And for whatever reason, I'm not here to stand in judgment. I know life happens. I know disappointment happens. I know what it feels like to come into a place of hopelessness and despair. I know what it feels like to be backslid. 
and to find myself in a place where I don't know God I, I just don't have the same hunger that I used to have I don't know what to do about it I'm just not hungry the way that I used to be but see here's what happened I love this God dropped this into my spirit and I just have been mm, I couldn't wait to share it with you <laughs> <laughs> see when you were on the mountaintop brother Howard when you were shouting dancing speaking in tongues on the mountaintop going and praying for people listening to God uh, Jasmine when when God was just moving in your life and and you felt the power of the Holy Ghost brother Dennis when everything just seemed like God just 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 was guiding you and speaking to you and you had such a clear channel to the throne of God everything was just so fantastic you got up just bouncing out of bed wondering what God was going to do that day when you were on the mountaintop uh, some of you said because you you heard the preached word and you read in the Bible that Jesus said that I've given you power over all the power of the enemy some of you begin to get some boldness in your walk with God and you begin to command Satan get thee behind you begin to say you don't have any business in my life I've got a trajectory that leads to victory I've got a trajectory that leads to the blessings of God in my life and so you're in my way and I'm not going to put up with it so Satan get thee behind come on somebody We've got the power to do that. And you know what happened? The second that you commanded him to get behind you, he got behind you and got out of your way. But you know what? That wasn't the problem. The problem is you backslid. So there's Satan behind me. And I'm backsliding. And then I'm a big mess because the devil's after me. Well, you told him to get behind you, dummy. You're not supposed to go back to meet him. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You're so confused and upset and, and disappointed and suddenly everything is everybody else's fault. Suddenly everything is pastor's fault and the elder's fault and, and the leadership fault. Sometimes it's easy to find fault with other folks and it's harder to look at our own selves and to look at our own actions and what we've done and when we can just take a little bit of a look at our own actions and find out where we are. No wonder the devil's all over you and on your back and in your heart and in your mind and, and all over your finances and all over your relationship and all over everything. You told him to get behind you and then you just ran right on back and said, here I am. And you're all surprised and disappointed and God's not coming through for you. No, come on now. But I'm here to preach about hunger today. Why is it that people are hungry for certain things and not for others. Well, I've got news for you. You were not born craving broccoli and Brussels sprouts. There's not a baby alive that just lights up when they get mashed Brussels sprouts. You see, the things that you feed yourself... Listen to me. The things that you feed yourself control your hunger. Now, I need to say that again because somebody's just trying to beginning to sink in a little bit. But the things that you... I asked you, do you have any control over your hunger? Here you go. The things that you feed your spirit are the very thing that controls your hunger. Listen, I've got news for you. You are not alone. Everybody loves potato chips. <laughs> it's not just you. Everybody loves potato chips. 
But if all you eat is a steady diet of potato chips, number one, we're going to have to roll you out of the church. And number two, it is going to mess you up. You are not going to have the strength that you need. Your health is going to take a dive. And your, uh, your ability to even function is going to take a dive. You're not going to be good for anything. And as a matter of fact, it seems like you can never eat one, right? If you can eat one, then I want to shake your hand because uh, companies have made millions of dollars on the whole concept that bet you can't eat one, right? You're going to have another and you're going to have another. But you see, here's what's going on. The reason that you feel empty, the reason that you can't, mm, I'm talking to somebody in this place today that you've been frustrated because you've been trying to serve God and yet you still are not coming to the place of satisfaction and fulfillment in your life. Hear me today. It's because you're feeding yourself empty spiritual calories you never will get full feeding yourself empty spiritual calories but you see here's how we control the things that we hunger for I found out that if I go on a diet and I force myself to eat certain things things that I wouldn't have two seconds for begin to look like the best food I've ever tasted in my life. I mean, vegetables, believe it or not, just start to taste amazing. Now, I like vegetables anyway, but when I've laid off the cake and the cookies and, and all of the fats and all of the things that I shouldn't have, you know what? That big old salad is just amazing to me. Those healthy things begin to take on a different life. Oh, somebody hear what I'm saying today. The reason that you're not where you want to be in God, the reason that you backslid is because your hunger is not being controlled in the way that God wants it to be. You've got to feed yourself yourself something that is going to make you strong. You've got to feed yourself something that is going to make you healthy in God. You've got to feed yourself something substantial. And can I tell you, when you begin to come to a place, Sister Laverne was talking about after church last Sunday, she said, Pastor, I've gone some places where they've been feeding me milk, but I came to church and I got some meat for myself. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, the word of God, it will sustain you. You. Hallelujah. And so the reason that folks come in this door and they just love all the jumping around and they just love all the healings and watching this dem demonstration of the Spirit of God and all the fun things and, and all the, you know, and I love all of that just as much as anybody ever could. But can I tell you, you've got to get some meat of the Word of God that will sustain you for what you're going to go through. Oh, listen, jumping around is not going to keep you when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Just feeling a chill bump up your spine is not going to keep you when everything is falling down around your feet. Oh, but the Word of God is able to keep you. The Word of God is able to heal you. The Word of God will... Uh, keep you in the time of storm. Uh, oh, listen, uh, your hunger can be controlled, uh, but you got to take dominion uh, over your flesh. Uh, you've got to take dominion uh, over your spirit. Uh, hallelujah. Hunger for the things of God does not happen by accident. It's because somebody said, I'm going to push this away. And I'm going to feed myself some things that I know are good for me. You know, the reason that we talk about faithfulness around here is because every single time we come together, God speaks. You mean even in prayer meeting? Mm-hmm. Even in prayer meeting. Even in Wednesday night church? Oh, yeah. Even in Wednesday night church. I have seen miracles. I have seen absolute. My God, we've got a miracle right over here. We've got somebody filled with the Holy Ghost over here. It happened on a Wednesday night. Every time we come together, God moves and God speaks. 
That's why we talk about faithfulness. It's not some kind of control thing. You see, the problem is that the enemy is subtle and the enemy is a manipulator. And so what he's done, those of us that did grow up in church, some of us had dictator pastors uh, and they made us to feel like we were a piece of dirt if we made any little mistake. Come on, somebody. I'm not making it up. You know what I'm talking about. It's the shepherd that abused the flock and there are people not living for God today because they transposed the treatment that they got from their pastor. They transposed the treatment that they got from bitter Christians onto God and God never had anything to do with it. God never condemned you. God never set you aside. He never did anything but love you. That's the message that we've got to preach to this generation that God has given us to minister to, to this nation. That's the message. And so we're not trying to, to be a dictator and, and keep, you know, keep little notes on who was here and who wasn't here and who let pastor know they were out of town and who did. But, but, but we're going to just tell you, Paul said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Forsake not the, how much plainer can it be? Why? It's not because of control. It's not because of dictatorship. It's because the word of God is real and the word of God is fresh and the word of God will sustain you and cause you to grow and cause you to be what you want to be in God. Some of you don't look like you want to in the spirit because you've been eating things that didn't contribute to your spiritual growth. Some of you look in the spiritual mirror and you're not happy with what What's looking back at you? Now, I can transpose that into the natural real quick and easy. I'll tell you how terrible it is <laughs> to, to not look like you want to look. My uncle just died a couple weeks ago. And I got to confess, I, I, I was grief stricken. But you know what, you know what I thought in, in the midst of all that grief? Oh, man, I wish he could have waited a couple weeks because I could have lost a few pounds. There's family I haven't seen in 15 years. I got to confess, the thought came through my mind because I know what it feels like to look in the mirror and not be happy with what you, what you see looking back at you. But I want to tell you, it's nobody else's fault. It's because I ate things that weren't good for me. I ate things that caused me to not be where I wanted to be. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying today? You've got control over your own hunger and God is calling those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because those are the ones that are going to be filled. Oh, is anybody hungry in this house for the things of God today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got to stop eating spiritual junk. We got to quit listening to the people. You know, the Bible talks about those, Brother Dennis, that are going to be raised up in the last day. False teachers that are going to the people gather. The Bible said people heap them up to themselves. You know what that means? It means that, you know what a heap is? It means that they just gather those people around like a, a magnet. It's like, oh, here's one that's going to make me feel good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep him close. Uh, I'm going to get on his YouTube channel and I'm going to watch him on TV and I'm going to listen to his blog and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get all interested. He makes me feel good. She makes me feel good. Here's another one. And, and that person tells me that I don't really have to have any kind of standard in my life and that I'm saved whether I want to be or not, so I'm going, to, I'm going to keep that person close to me. There's another one that said that God doesn't require anything of me, and that feels kind of good, so I don't have to do anything. You, listen, we can heap up uh, people, and the Bible said that that's what's going to happen. They're going to heap up teachers having itching ears. That's what's going to happen. I told you that I began to pray about these churches. You know what God said? Number one, he said, keep, keep your nose where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so glad my nose belongs at RPA. <laughs> yeah. This nose is not going anywhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is where God has put me. Matter of fact, I belonged to another church. I take seriously when God puts me somewhere. I take it seriously when God puts me somewhere. 
I had an elder in this church, and, and this elder was just full of the devil. I'll just be honest with you. This elder was trying to break up my relationship and trying to just do all this ungodly stuff. And, and this elder sat me down and said, after, you know, I went through an unfortunate breakup that was out of my control. And this elder sat me down after that and said, what are you still doing here in this church? I looked him straight in the eye and I said, you must not know me very well because this is where God put me and I'm not going anywhere until he releases me from this church. Hallelujah. I've got my foot on the rock. Hallelujah. I've got my soul anchored in Jesus Christ and the winds are going to try to blow, but I'm not going anywhere. Hallelujah. This is where God has called me to be. But I began to, to pray about that. And you know what God said? He said, what do you think it's supposed to look like when the Laodicea church rises up? What do you think it's supposed to be like? What do you think they're going to preach from the pulpits in the Laodicean church? How many know that there is a church that is rising up in this last day called Laodicea? A church that doesn't want to have anything to do with the things of God. That doesn't want to preach the blood of Jesus. That doesn't want to offend anybody. In fact, we had a couple of people walk out the door because I think they didn't like what they were hearing today. But it's all right. We're going to preach the word of God. God, no matter what happens, we are going to preach the word of God. You see, the Laodicea church is coming up to make people comfortable. The Laodicean church. Why would the enemy use a church to deceive people? That's right. That's right. Brother Robert said that the Bible talk Jesus talked about wolves in sheep's clothing. Wolves in, listen, this is going to happen. It's going to happen. As a matter of fact, I'd go as far as to say it is happening. So when, when we get to a place where we, we compare what's going on here and, and then we compare what's going on in other churches that are maybe uh, making things convenient and, and have these thousands of people, listen, I'm not against large churches. I wish we had thousands of people. But when we look at these churches that are uh, doing this and doing that and, and trying to make everything comfortable and palatable and bringing everything down to the lowest common denominator, listen, what did you think Laodicea was supposed to look like? The enemy is moving in the church because that's how he can deceive. He's not going to deceive by bringing the, the church of Satan up and everybody, oh, that looks good. I'll just, you know, I used to belong to Jesus and I'm, I'm going to go worship Satan. No, people are not signing up to be Satanists or atheists. People are signing up to go somewhere where it's just a little bit different, where it's just a little bit off the mark. Come on, somebody, where maybe we, we don't just, we just don't talk about eternity, where we just don't talk about something that is required of you. Oh, but come on, somebody. I came to talk to the people of God about a real eternity. I came to talk about the fact that you will spend eternity somewhere and nobody is going to be saved by accident. Yes. Hallelujah. We need to get lost in Jesus. We need to get lost in Jesus. Psalm 42 and 1, the psalmist said this, as the heart or the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, what happens when you begin to, to get close to God when you begin to take dominion over your flesh and you begin to say no flesh I know we're tired I know we don't feel like it but we're going to go to the house of the Lord we're going to be in the presence of the Lord no I know I'm tired flesh but I'm going to get up and I'm going to read the word of God because I've determined that I'm going to feed myself something that is going to be good for me that is going to change me that is going to keep me on the straight and narrow path I've determined that I will cause my hunger to be according to the things of God because I'm going to feed myself on a constant basis and so David or the psalmist said this he said there was a time when he became so thirsty for the things of God that it was just like he was panting he said after the, the, the just like the deer is panting for water 
That's how thirsty I am. Hallelujah. Listen, I've got to be honest with you. I grew up in church, and I didn't always like reading my Bible. I grew up in church, and I didn't always like coming to the altar when the preacher opened up the altar and, and pouring out my heart to God and responding to the message that had been preached. i got to be honest with you. I didn't always like... Now, listen, we had to do stuff that you have never been asked to do. I didn't like going door to door always and selling peanut brittle so that we could raise funds for... The, the church building and pay off the church. I didn't always like going door to door and asking people if they needed a Bible study. They called it Search for Truth and the chart was about this big. And, and, and we, I'm telling you, some of the things that we did, I didn't always like doing the things that, that the preacher told me were good for me. I didn't always like it. Oh, but you know what? We've got to help these young babies in Christ because there's not a child alive that knows what's good for them. And when babies come into the house of God, we've got to encourage them. We've got to tell them, listen, you may not understand right now, but the most important thing that you can possibly do is get yourself to church because you're going to get fed, you're going to get nourished, and you're going to grow up into something in God. Listen, you may not get it. You may not understand it. Your baby doesn't understand when you're feeding the things that are necessary for the growth. But you see, the most important time in in, uh, somebody's life uh, to eat the right things is when those bones are growing. When all of those tissues are expanding and, and the nutrition, if you've all seen the tragic uh, pictures of the malnourished children in various countries uh, that are impoverished, and it's just heartbreaking. But can I tell you, we got some babies right in the church that are malnourished. Why? Because they are not getting themselves into a place, and the people of God are not reaching out and saying, Listen, you can get mad at me all you want, but I've got to help you get into a place where you can. And get fed hallelujah anybody understand what I'm saying hallelujah hallelujah Acts 17 verse 28 says this for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring you see, the more that you begin to get close to Jesus, the more that you begin to press in to the things of God, listen, the things of the world begin to fade away. I, I, I know there are times when we think that the things in this world are so huge and so, so big and, and what we want more than anything in the world. But can I tell you, there comes a place in your life when you begin to see things a little bit differently. When you begin to press in, just like the woman with the issue of blood, she began to press in. The, the, the cards were stacked against her. There were people trying to keep her away from Jesus. Don't you know who that is? Don't you know that he can't touch somebody with your condition? Don't you know that you don't have any right? And can I tell you, I'm right there along with her. I didn't have any right. I didn't have anything that was good enough or, or, or redeeming inside of me that deserved what Jesus had for me. Oh, but can I tell you, when I touched him, everything was different. When I pushed in and I began to touch him, oh, it's time to get lost in Jesus. It's time to let go of everything else and understand our priorities have got to be set. We've got to have a determination today. The winds are going to blow and the waves are going to try to take you away. Oh, but listen, if you're, if you're, you are anchored in Jesus. If you're lost in Jesus, if you're in the hand of Jesus, you're not going to go anywhere. Tragedy is not going to take you out of his hand. Loss is not going to take you out of his hand. Disappointment does not have the power to take you out of his hand. Listen, it doesn't matter what comes your way when you've got a made up mind, when you've got yourself lost in the things of God, when you've begun to hunger and thirst after righteousness. All those empty cows calories, they don't really hold the allure that they used to because there's something about getting lost in the things of God. There's nothing like his presence. There's nothing like a relationship with him. Mark the eighth chapter in the 34th verse. Here's what Jesus said. I began to think when I read this, wow, 
Jesus, couldn't, have, couldn't you have had maybe a different recruiting pitch than this? Here was his recruiting pitch. It wasn't just the disciples, it was other people around him. When he had called the people unto him with all his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Woohoo, get right on that. <laughs> wow. Sounds like a thrill a minute. Verse 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels. And the gospels. The same shall save it. I'll be honest with you, when I was a kid, this scripture scared me to death. I thought, oh, here they come. They're going to cut my head off for sure. And they're, you know, the Antichrist has these patrols and they're going to roam the streets. And, you know, I grew up in an era of rapture scare. I mean, there were books that were written about being thrown in snake pits because you didn't want to take the mark and, and, and you know, all this stuff. I, I don't know why we didn't just decide to go in the rapture, why we had to be afraid of everything else. As kids, we just thought, sure, that, you know, it, it was almost like an unattainable place, Lance, to be able to go in the rapture. I mean, they had us convinced that if we thought the wrong thought on the wrong second and the trumpet sound, that sure as, as anything, we would miss the, the call and we would not go in the rapture and that we would be left behind we had songs I wish we'd all been ready and we had movies and we had books and I'm telling you they had me so traumatized I came home from school one day and my mom hadn't got home from work when I thought she should be there and I began to pray through because I just knew I had missed I began to pray through and then I began to call everybody in the church phone book Then I began to analyze, well, I don't know about that one. Maybe I better call this one. <laughs> then I called my grandmother because I was 100% sure that she would go in the rapture. But alas, it was a long distance call and I really got caught. That was back in the day when it was expensive to call long distance and my mom looked at that phone bill. <laughs> but I grew up during the rapture scare. I'm thankful. I, I believe in the rapture. I believe in heaven. I believe in hell just as much as I ever did. But you know what? I got a revelation of the power of the blood of Jesus. I, I got a revelation of the efficacious nature of the blood of Jesus. It is everything that I ever needed to be saved. Uh, and I am safe uh, in the blood of Jesus. I've been washed in the blood. Every sin has been eradicated. And I am ready for the call. I am ready should the trumpet sound. I don't go to sleep before afraid that I might miss the rapture I don't <laughs> praise God and if you do then you need to get delivered and understand the blood for yourself and so this scripture just scared me to death I just knew oh if I don't go ahead and you know line up and here just here go ahead you know whatever you want to do then and you know what there are people that have given their lives I don't mean to minimize that at all there is a pregnant woman I believe in Sudan, Africa, who has been, she's eight months pregnant, and she is a Christian in a Muslim nation who has been sentenced to death, and they plan to, to uh, flog her with seven, or I'm sorry, 100 lashes, and then hang her by the neck until she's dead. That's going on right now because she won't renounce her faith in Jesus. So this isn't a joke. And there are people who have given their lives. And we need to pray for that woman. Whatever her name is. I, 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 if you can look that up. But she, what they're going to do is they're going to wait for her child to be born. And then they're going to execute her. And the plan is because she has a husband who's also a Christian. And part of her execution is because of marrying a Christian. She has a husband that is a Christian and she has 
a, a small child, like 20 months or something like that, who is in prison with her because the father is not fit to take care of the child according to Sharia law. Listen, if you think we're not living in a time of evil, and if you think that our government is doing a service by saying that that so-called religion is the same as Christianity, I want to tell you it's pure evil. It's pure evil. And you better open your eyes if you think we're all just going to hold hands and walk in to the streets of gold. No, listen, it's all about Jesus Christ and him crucified. But this scripture means something different to me today because the closer that I begin to get to Jesus, the more I begin to know what it felt like to lose my life in him. Hallelujah. I begin to understand what this scripture means when it says, if you'll lose your life, you're going to save it. You're going to receive it. Can I tell you that since I got lost in Jesus, since I began to search and seek and call and, and pursue after him, oh, listen, since I began to get lost in him, I've never been more alive. I've never had more joy. I've never had more satisfaction and uh, more fulfillment uh, in my life. Uh, I'm hungry for him uh, because I made the choice. Uh, flesh, uh, we will seek the things of God. Uh, flesh, uh, we are going to be faithful to the things of God. Uh, and you know what? Uh, something happened along the way. Uh, the more that I began to pray uh, and force myself uh, to take dominion over my flesh, uh, the more I wanted to pray. Uh, the more I came to church uh, and began to worship God, uh, the more that I wanted to worship God, uh, the more that I I began to seek the things of the spirit all oh, the further that I wanted to go can I tell you you do have control over your hunger you just begin to seek after God and you're going to get more hungry and more thirsty for him than you've ever been before you can control where you are in God you can control by just simply feeding yourself the things that you need to have verse 36 says this it says that for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Listen, we're so busy trying to make things work down here. We're so busy trying to have some kind of happiness right here and now. Am I telling the truth? How much of your time do you spend on the things of your life, the things of the world, the things that are necessary, going to work, cleaning your house, taking care of your car, all of the things that we have to do, spending time with your family, all of these things that are necessary, trying to achieve a different level of success in this life. How much time have we spent planning and dreaming and even planning things that would distract us like vacations, trips? How much time do we spend every day on that? And how much time do we spend seeking after the things of God? Listen, folks, this life is temporary. God wants you to have joy and happiness right here and now. God wants you to be blessed right here and now. But you're going about it the wrong way. Because the way to have life and life more abundantly is to lose yourself in Jesus. Lose your life so that you can find it. Does anybody hear what I'm saying today? Lose your life. Let go. Sister Evelyn preached it a couple of weeks ago. Let go. And lose yourself in God. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? If you gain every single thing that you ever dreamed about. I mean everything. How many has ever dreamed of living in a big giant house? How many have ever dreamed of driving just the car of your dreams? I mean, the, the, just imagine this incredible car just dreamed about getting behind that wheel and it was your car. How many have ever dreamed of having friends that, that 
were famous and, and, and even maybe being famous yourself. If you were to gain every single one of those dreams, I want you to listen to me today. I want you to listen to me today. If you achieve everything on your list and multiply that by a hundred, as a matter of fact, if you gain the whole world, if everything in this world belonged to you, every house, every car, everybody belonged to you, every, everyone was your servant. <laughs> And you lost your soul then you've lost everything you've lost it all what will a man give in exchange for his soul your soul is worth more than everything in this world as a matter of fact your soul one soul just you just you are you hearing me just you your soul is worth everything in the universe and more Jesus died for you. He shed his blood for you. And today is a day of rededication. Mm. Mm. I feel the presence of God speaking to somebody. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody's lost their way, but today you can begin to hunger and thirst for the right things. Hebrews, the second chapter, the third verse says this, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Somebody needs to hear this today. You can run, but you can't hide. God's got your number. He loves you more than you will ever be loved by anybody in this world. He loves you no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what mistakes you've made. Somebody hear this today. Jesus loves you. And your soul is worth everything to him. Hallelujah. What have you done to make your salvation sure? What have you done to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. You see, that is our purpose. That is our purpose. You know, all these whiny people just wondering what the meaning of life is. My goodness, I get sick of hearing it. What's the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to serve the Lord and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. I hope this shakes you up like it shook me up. I tell our preachers, if something doesn't hit you between the eyes before you preach it, maybe you shouldn't preach it. <laughs> Stand with me, if you will. Hallelujah. More than security. More than success. If I to others... More than security, more than success, more than others, I must make my own. I'll take Jesus or the rest, for if I should attain the goal to gain this world 
and all it holds and then if I should lose my soul then I have lost it all oh, for above all else I must be saved for above all else I must be saved for whatever you have to do to me don't let me be lost for eternity for above all else I must be Even though the souls of those I love seem oh so dear More than others I must make my own salvation sure For if I to others would show the way and then I'd become just a cast away this price I can't afford to pay my soul my soul is worth it all for above all else help me sing that I must be saved hallelujah oh for above all else I must be saved for whatever you have to do to me don't let me be lost for eternity for above all else I must be saved hallelujah I want to open these altars I know God is speaking to somebody right now would you come and just spend some time with the Lord if you need to go I understand but I believe that the Spirit of God has spoken today. Would you come? I need the deacons and the elders to come to pray with people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you find yourself to, a place to pray and just spend some time with the Lord today? Let's rededicate ourselves to Him. Hallelujah. Whatever you have to do to me, Lord, don't let me be lost Oh, for eternity, for above all else, I must be
security more than success if I must choose to own one thing I'll take Jesus all the rest for if I should attain the goal to gain this world and all it holds and then if I should lose my soul then I have lost it all making some decisions in your life hallelujah oh listen make those decisions with eternity in your view hallelujah God help me make those decisions today Lord God because I want you more than anything else in my life hallelujah God I want to be hungry and thirsty like never before in my life Jesus for you hallelujah for whatever you have to do to me don't let me be lost for eternity for above all else i must be saved even though the souls of those that I love seem oh so dear more than others I must make my own salvation sure for if I to others would show the way I become just a cast away this price I can't afford to pay my soul is worth it all oh for above all else I must be saved Don't let me be 
lost for eternity for a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray today that God has placed an urgency in your spirit. An urgency. I hope that nobody will leave this service saying, well, I've heard that message a hundred times. I pray that the Holy Ghost will speak to your spirit with his word today. Because eternity is not a joke. Eternity is not a joke. Not one of us has the promise of tomorrow. But we can leave here knowing that He holds our future and He holds our tomorrow. Hallelujah. God is speaking to somebody that has been in so much turmoil in your life. And the Spirit of God wants to say to you today that that turmoil does not belong to you and it is not the will of God. It is not your turmoil. It is not your storm. And if you will leave here today with a made up mind like never before that I'm going to seek the things of God. You see what's happening is you took your eyes off the prize. You took your eyes off of the things that God has placed before you. And today if you're one of those I was talking about that has been backsliding that's not a judgment on my call, on my, on my part. I'm not here to pass judgment on anybody. I'm just here to tell you the truth. If you're one that has backslidden from where you used to be or where you want to be, there's hope for you. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm not here with a message of condemnation. I'm here with a message of hope. Hallelujah. You can start over today. Hallelujah. You can start over today. That's about the best news I've ever heard, Latricia. There's brand new mercy for me today. Hallelujah. I said there's brand new mercy for me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what I've done in the past, today starts over afresh and anew. Hallelujah. Praise God. Would you take the hand of the person next to you? We're going to be dismissed. Hallelujah. But I just feel like we need to pray together as a family as we're dismissed. Keep Pastor Morgan in your prayers. I talked to her and she, she loves her family, but she also loves this family. And she is ready to come home. <laughs> and so she will be with us in service Wednesday night. And she will be bringing the word next Sunday. So I want to make sure and be here for that. Amen. Don't forget about the teacher training on Tuesday. Sister Linda is right here, and she needs to hear from you if you want to participate in the teacher training for Tuesday. Hallelujah. Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday. Wednesday. The shaves are going to be uh, ministering, uh, going on a trip. And so let's pray for their travel mercies, uh, Pastor Morgan's travel mercies, and uh, and let's just ask God today as we pray I will I will lead you in prayer but I want you to pray for yourself and for the person that you're holding hands with because this is one of those messages that is almost scary to preach I'm not trying to make anybody afraid I just know the Word of God and what it feels like when it comes through this vessel I've just I know what it feels like and when it's serious <laughs> you know I wish I had a message that we could just run and jump and do victory marches and all that kind of stuff I'd love to preach that but today I'm preaching to somebody mm. <laughs> and I don't know why there's such a seriousness in the Word of God today I don't know why there's such an urgency but as we pray to dismiss would you pray for the Word of God that it would take root and lodging in your own spirit today and for the person on your left and your right, whoever it is that you're holding hands with and those that are watching online today. I believe God is going to change somebody by His Word. 
Right now, Jesus, Lord, your word has come forth, and God, let it take, Lord, place, let it take root, Lord, let it take lodging in good ground. God, would you cause it to, to find a place in our hearts today, Lord, that we would be moved by it, but not simply moved, but also changed by the word of God today. Lord, I don't ever want to be the same. Lord, I want to move forward into the things of God like never before. Help me to maintain, God, the hunger that will lead me into the things of the Holy Ghost, the things of your word, the things of God. Lord, I want to hunger and thirst after you like never before. God, I pray that you would cause a brand new uh, desire to grow in me, God, to spring forth uh, in me and each one of your people, Lord. Uh, these are the last days, uh, and God, we must stand in this day, in this hour. We must live the life. We must preach the word. We must spread the word of God and the gospel of the blood of Jesus Christ in this day, in this hour. My God, if I have a price to pay so that I can spread your word, God, I'm here to rededicate myself to the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to deny myself and take up my cross so that I can follow you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your spirit just move right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we are sealed by the Holy Ghost of God. And so, Lord, right now, I ask you that you would seal your word by the Holy Ghost within us right now. Seal your word within us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the people of God said, Amen. Would you clap your hands for the Lord today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Greet somebody today as you leave this place. You are dismissed in the name of Jesus.